This video is going over Unit 6, which is talking about expressions and equations. And this will help you review for the end of your testing and to just practice everything we've learned so far. So it says, which expression is equal to 7 to the third power? Keep in mind, you need to make sure you show your work and try to do these problems on your own before you watch the video. So 7 to the third power does not mean 7 times 3. It means 7 multiplied by itself 3 times. 7 times 7 times 7. Okay, so seven times seven times seven would work. Seven times three does not work. Seven plus seven plus seven is, does not work and seven plus three does not work, okay? Um, another way they might write it is seven to the second power times seven, because this means two sevens multiplied by one more seven, so that's still three sevens multiplied by each other. Okay, next one. Select all the equations where x equals five is a solution. So I'm going to plug in 5 for my x and see if the statement is true. And if it is, then I'm going to, I'm going to click it <laughs> or pick it. So if I have 5 minus 5, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 0 equals 0. So that one works. Okay, this one's 11 minus 5. So is 11 minus 5, 3? And 11 minus 5 is not 3, okay? So it would be 6, right? So that one does not work. So equals 6. So this one does not work. Um, 1 plus 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, and 6 does not equal 5, so not that one. 10 equals 2x, so 2x means 2 times x, and if x is 5, it's 2 times 5, and 2 times 5 does equal 10, so this one does work. Um, 1 half times, sorry, times x equals 10, so I'd write it as 1 half times 5, and 5 over 1, equals 1 times 5 is 5 over 2, and 5 halves does not equal 10. It would be 2 and a half. So this one doesn't work. This one is 5 squared, so 5 to the second power, which equals 5 times 5, and 5 times 5 equals 25. So that one works. So you only pick the ones where 5, x equals 5 is the solution, meaning both, the, both sides of the equation are balanced if we solve that. Okay, which expression is equivalent to 15a minus 6b? Okay, so first of all, I can eliminate two right away because these two have an addition sign, and this one has a subtraction sign. So these two aren't gonna work right away, and I don't even need to worry about checking them. Then I'm going to distribute. The number on the outside of the parentheses needs to be multiplied by all the parts inside the parentheses. So this is five times three a minus five times b which equals 5 times 3a is 15a minus 5 times b is 5b, but it needs to be 6b, so not that one. So I'm going to distribute 3, so 3 times 5a minus 3 times 2b, which equals 3 times 5a is 15a minus 3 times 2b is 6b, which is matched up with that one. So this one works make sure you know how to use the distributive property. It will come up on end of your testing. Okay, question four. So we have an expression four times three to the power of t. It says um, evaluate, evaluate just means solve, okay? What does it equal? The expression when t is two. So I'm gonna rewrite that as four times three. Instead of t, I'm gonna write to the power of two. So first, we do exponents before we multiply. If you remember, we do PEMDAS, so we follow this order. Make sure you know the order of how we do math. So 3 to the second power means 3 times 3, which is 9. Um, so I'm just doing 4 times 9. And 4 times 9, if you're multiplying by 4s, remember, um, if you're multiplying by 9s, then you can put down 9 times 4. I put down my fourth finger, and I have 30, 3 10s and 6 ones, so 36. So if that trick, if you know how to do that, that can help you on the test without a calculator. Okay, next one. Now t is 3. So I'm going to rewrite this. 4 times 3 to the power of 3. So first I do exponents before I multiply. So 3 to the third power means 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So really I could rewrite this as 4 times 27. So I'm going to multiply that out. 4 times 7 is 28, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. 
So this one equals 108. Okay. Very good. Here we go. Question five. Two ninths of the students in a school are in sixth grade. How many sixth graders are there if the school has 90 students? So there's a couple ways we can do this. One way you could do it is with a table. So I'm going to start with the table. So I'm going to say sixth graders, sixth graders, and then total students. So if two ninths of the students of the school are sixth graders, that means two out of the nine total kids of the school. So I'm putting my fraction as a ratio on a table. It says how many sixth graders are there if the school if the school has 90 students, meaning 90 total students. Okay, so I'm going to think, what do I multiply 9 by to get to 90? And I multiply it by 10. So I'm going to multiply the 2 by 10 to get an equivalent ratio. And 2 times 10 is 20. So there would be 20 sixth graders at the, at the school. Now I'm going to come up with a new row for this next question. How many sixth graders are there if the school has 27 total students? So under the total, I'm putting 27. So I'm going to see which ratio above helps me get to 27. And I'm going to say 9 helps me get to 27 more than 90 does. Because I know 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to multiply 2 by 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. So that would be 6 students are 6th graders. Okay. Then the last one says how many students, meaning how many total students are in the school if 42 of them are 6th graders. So this time we're saying we know how many 6th graders there are. There's 42 6th graders, so this order is a little different. Last time we did it as the total, this time this is 6th graders are 42. So I'm going to look above and see which ratio helps me get um, an equivalent ratio. So I could use 6 or I could use 2, okay? Because I know I can multiply 2 by something and 6 by something to get it. So whichever one is easiest for you, I'll just do 2, how about? Because I know 2 times 21 is 42, so I'm going to multiply 9 by 21. Okay, you could also do 6 times 7 is 42, so do 27 times 7. Both of them would work, but I'm going to do 9 times 21. So 21 times 9, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. So it would be 189 total students. Okay, so tables are our friends. Anytime we see a fraction, we could use that as a ratio on a table. Next one, so this is multi-part. Question six, my poured 2.6 liters of water into a partially filled pitcher. The pitcher then contained 10.4 liters. So, there was a pitcher, think of, let's say this is our pitcher, okay? And it's filled with some water. It's partially filled. We don't know how much of it was filled. Um, and then filled it up 2.6 liters. And then the total of this pitcher is 10.4. So we're picking a diagram that represents this situation. So this one showing 2.6 plus 10.4 equals how much it started with. No, that doesn't work because we're not adding 10.4. Um, 10.4 should be the total. This next one says 10.4 is the total, and it started with some, and then we added 2.6. So this diagram makes sense, okay, because the total is 10.4 because it says the picture then contained after we poured some in. So this um, diagram makes sense. Since I drew it out, I can say, oh, I have x and 2.6, and it equals 10.4. So I would say diagram B best represents the situation, okay? So now we're gonna use diagram B to solve. So, um, okay, so a couple things. So first, so we have diagram B, write an equation. Remember your equation has an equal sign that represents the situation. Use X as your variable like the diagram shows. Do not include spaces between characters. So here's our diagram. We know we have x and 2.6, so we're going to add those. And x and 2.6 equal 10.4. So I'm just going to write it as x plus 2.6 equals 10.4. That's my equation. Okay. Um, 
and I'm just following it from left to right, there's no spaces, and it shows what it equals. Remember, equation has an equal sign, always. Now solve the equation you wrote. So we have x plus 2.6 equals 10.4. So we have to figure out how much did the picture start with. So x, I'm going to point to my variable x, which is being added by 2.6. So we're going to do the opposite of adding 2.6, which is subtracting 2.6. So on both sides of my equation, I'm going to subtract 2.6. I subtract 2.6 because plus 2.6 minus 2.6 crosses out to be 0. So then I just have x equals, which is what I want. I want x to be isolated so I know what it equals. And then I just need to subtract. So 4 minus 6 I can't do, so i got, got to go next door to borrow. I can't borrow from a 1, or a 0, but I can borrow from a 1. So I'm borrowing there. And then I'm going to regroup in. 14 minus 6 is 8. I bring down my decimal. 9 minus 2 is 7. So x equals 7.8. And you can always go in your equation to make sure it makes sense. Does 7.8 plus 2.6 equal 10.4? So 8 plus 6 is 14. Bring down the decimal. 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So it does equal 10.4. So my solution is correct. Okay, that's it. So thank you for watching the video.